rise in adults being assessed for ADHD recently, and it's understandable that people want to get their symptoms thoroughly and correctly assessed so they can get the right treatment. Today, we're talking to leading consultant psychiatrist and cognitive behavioral psychotherapist, Dr. Marce Danilovic, to discuss the importance of getting the correct diagnosis for ADHD. We're looking at what's involved in the process of being tested and getting a prescription by expert specialists such as Mr. D- 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 Dr. Danilovic, as well as discussing ADHD and its symptoms. Good afternoon, Dr. Danilovic. It's great Good to afternoon. speak to you today. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. It's a great pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, So could you tell us more about yourself and your work? Yes, so uh, I'm a consultant psychiatrist in private practice um, based in South Yorkshire and the private practice based in West Yorkshire. Uh, I also work for the leading provider of uh, residential care for people with learning difficulties and um, neurodevelopmental disorders such as ADHD. I've graduated from Jagiellonian University in Poland over 35 years ago and subsequently um, completed course of studies in clinical psychiatry at Cardiff University and cognitive therapy at Oxford University. Great. It's well, that's, like, like that's I said, <laughs> um, that's fantastic. Like I said, it's great to speak to you today and learn all about your expertise. Um, so uh, let's get started. Uh, yes. So, what is ADHD and what are its symptoms? So, ADHD is classified as what we call neurodevelopmental disorder. Uh, which means that it actually starts in usually in early childhood uh, where the symptoms might be slightly different than in adulthood. But in a nutshell, um, people suffering from ADHD, they find it difficult to concentrate, they find it difficult to sit still, Uh, They find it also difficult to complete uh, certain projects like school project. And um, the the characteristic of this difficulties with completion of project is that they are getting quite excited and doing really well at the very beginning of project where there is a challenging bit, uh, but they have significant difficulties to wrapping uh, this project up. So when it gets to the final stages, which are slightly more boring, they are mm, quite likely to give up on it. They also very often switch uh, from one hobby to another, usually throwing themselves into the, the hobby or an interest and um, sometimes even recklessly spending uh, huge amounts of money on those projects and then never uh, carrying on. They usually also have difficulties to um, sit still and uh, even take part in family gatherings or or lengthy meetings. Um, They quite often... Uh, can interrupt others uh, whilst they're speaking because uh, they feel sort of a pressure to um, put across their views. Um, and very often, uh, one of the things that, that we always ask patients is, are they able to actually sit and concentrate on an episode of a TV series, for example, without at the same time getting up, making a brew, flipping through the phone, etc., etc. So not all of those symptoms have to be present. Uh, this is just a guidance. Please do not diagnose yourself with ADHD if you have some of them. Uh, 
but um, they usually they usually uh, come in sort of a cluster of of symptoms. Right, great. That's really good to hear it in in such detail as well, because I think it's so easy to just think, oh, it's just somebody that just doesn't pay attention to something, but it's actually much more complex than that. So that's really interesting. Oh, absolutely. It yeah. it's, it is uh, the presentation with ADHD is is totally totally different. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So um, you touched on it a little bit earlier, um, but is there a distinctive difference in ADHD diagnosis for adults and children? In terms of the symptomatology, it's quite similar, but obviously it will present different, slightly differently. So um, the children would throw themselves into a certain project, but obviously usually won't be able to spend enormous amount of money. They might be asking the parents, but they have no access to, yeah. uh, to the funds. Uh, so I think the presentation is very, very similar. Uh, in terms of problems with concentration, um, sort of hyperactivity, uh, sometimes disruptive behaviors, uh, sometimes, you know, having difficulties in taking turns when talking. However, obviously, because of um, th their circumstances, children will present slightly different uh, than adults. And therefore, there is distinctive difference in assessing children and assessing adults. They are two, they're actually three different tools which are used in a early childhood. Then there is one for the sort of um, young people up to L age of 18. And there is the third tool uh, which is used for assessment of adults. Now, I think it's, it's important also to mention that very often, from my uh, my private practice experience, people who are adults with ADHD, they do not present to the practice saying, oh, I think I've got ADHD, can I get assessed? They present um, to the practice either with symptom of depression or anxiety or both. And this is usually linked to the fact that because of their um, difficulties uh, in day-to-day -day functioning, they are developed secondary mental health conditions uh, due to struggling with day-to-day um, -day coping. And then whilst we do the consultation, uh, we sometimes, if, if they present with some of those symptoms, we do this screening questionnaire for ADHD and suggest full assessment, obviously, if they if they score enough of, of uh, questions on the on the screening questionnaire. Great, absolutely. Like I really love that there's just the different types of tests for different age groups. Um, that's really interesting. Okay, so um, how do you get an ADHD diagnosis and prescribed medication? So getting a diagnosis of ADHD is quite a lengthy process. So obviously each client who either um, presents at our clinic or um, uh, requests uh, a ADHD um, assessment uh, gets certain forms which we ask to fill, which are sort of self-reported screening questionnaires so uh, there will be very similar questions about symptoms that I've de described before. And once those uh, questionnaires are sent back to us, uh, our ADHD specialist uh, would go through them and see if the um, full um, screening, full, full um, diagnostic, uh, interview for ADHD uh, is recommended. If it is, uh, we are using a tool called DIVA-5, which is an ADHD structures um, assessment uh, tool for adults. Uh, this assessment takes about three hours. Uh, there are very detailed questions uh, in regards of presentation in 
various situations. So we asking about the family um, situation, about work, about university, if someone is at the university. And then this um, questionnaire is scored uh, in the structured way. So there is a scoring process. Uh, and then uh, the ADHD specialist is then creating a full report based on uh, the answer with suggested diagnosis, uh, which the report is shared with uh, our patient or if they want, it's shared with their GP as well. Now, going to prescribing for ADHD, it's, it's uh, even more complicated. So um, once someone receives the diagnosis of ADHD, prior to prescribing any medication, we make sure that there are appropriate blood tests and echocardiogram completed, so the heart, heart monitoring completed. Uh, once those results are satisfactory, then uh, I would see the patient for the initial consultation and discuss um, the uh, treatment options. The process then is quite lengthy because we cannot start someone on high doses of those medications. So um, the client will have weekly appointment and we will slowly uh, raise the dose of the medication till they feel that their symptoms subsided. Very often, we also discuss with the client sort of a structured way of assessment if the treatment is working. So, for example, uh, we, they will be asked to try to watch a full episode of, of, of a series. Um, and if they are able to sit still for 45 minutes and actually uh, the medication that they're taking in the morning is sort of um, treating the symptoms throughout the day. That means that they are on the right dose. Once, once we establish the dose and they are on the effective dose for a month, at least for a month, then under what is called shared care protocol, we are trying to request from the GPs to take over prescribing. So that's, that's how the process looks like. Wow, that's so interesting. And it just it's just much more um, thorough, you know, when you were talking about the echo echocardiogram. Um, that's it's very interesting and really, really cool. Um, okay, so is a GP um the first port of call for ADHD testing or are specialists the best option? I mean, in terms of, of ADHD diagnosis, uh, the GP rarely specialize in, uh, in, the G, in, the, in the diagnosis of ADHD. Uh, obviously, uh, if the patient thinks that they might require this diagnosis, the GP is usually able to do some simple screening and refer um, the uh, patient to uh, the NHS uh, Neurodevelopmental Disorder Services. Unfortunately, the waiting lists uh, are absolutely extortionate. Um, I mean, depending on the area, uh, we're talking more about years mm -hmm. than months. So wow. recently in, in my area, the waiting list was over two years. For the for the assessment. So, if someone um, then uh, wants a private assessment, obviously they uh, can uh, go privately. There is many private companies which uh, are providing such an assessment. However, I think one needs to be careful and, and look into the companies which are actually providing very thorough assessment. The points that I've previously mentioned, these are the points uh, recommended for National Institute for Clinical Excellence Guidance. So um, those guidance are open source, so anyone can Google them uh, and read what they should be provided for the money they are paying for the assessment. 
Great. Um, that's good to know that it's available for everybody to, to have a look and just really, you know, maybe do a little bit of homework and just get a better idea of what they need to do, really. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what's involved in an ADHD diagnosis um, test? Right. So as, as, as I mentioned previously, um, we do, um, as ADHD is a neurodevelopmental disorder, uh, this structured interview, uh, which is a lengthy booklet, really, uh, is um, uh, applied with the patient who answers all those questions. But what we're also then looking for is someone who knew them as a child. Mm -hmm. And the majority of these questions are then asked either to a sibling or, or a parent or, uh, you know, someone who really um, knew them well to establish that actually those symptoms started in childhood because uh, that's the, the characteristic of neurodevelopmental disorders. Uh, also, if they have, uh, I don't know, some, some reports from school, maybe educational reports, et cetera, et cetera. We also ask of, for copies of those reports mm -hmm. just to make sure that the diagnosis is really thoroughly considered. And the reason for that is that the medication they are prescribed for ADHD uh, are prescribed lifelong. So this is not a treatment that someone will take for a year, for example, just six months or a year. They will be on the medication for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. Each medication, and it can even be a paracetamol, have uh, their uh, side effects. Each medication is also causing some other, other problems. Majority of medication prescribed uh, for ADHD, puts patient at a higher risk of high blood pressure, heart problems, arrhythmias, which is uh, irregular heartbeats, uh, and therefore prescribing those medications without a thorough assessment where we are absolutely sure that someone suffers from the uh, condition is quite actually dangerous. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so how important is it to get the right diagnosis for ADHD? Yeah, I think I've, I've partially answered, <laughs> answered this question. I, I think one important thing is that sometimes from my, my perspective, if a patient presents at the clinic with symptoms of depression and anxiety and sometimes it is quite striking that they might be suffering from ADHD then it is extremely important to get this diagnosis right because then we are able to treat the cause of depression or anxiety so treat ADHD mm -hmm. sometimes without actually starting uh, patients on antidepressants or other medication which might not be very effective if the main reason for how they feel is ADHD. And I guess it's it's much more important in adulthood than in childhood because children rarely develop the depression. Mm. I think the very, um, very common um, thing that we're coming across is actually people going to the university where uh, they require to apply more structure to their learning themselves that mm -hmm. is imposed on them uh, as in, in, in a school. And then they start really, really struggling. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, as they are failing, they usually develop then reactive depression or anxiety disorders. So I think that that's the first main point why, why it's so important to have the right diagnosis. I've mentioned the second point, obviously, which is the medication, which are potentially quite dangerous, which can um, cause a long-term harm 
Um, and that's why an appropriate monitoring like the blood tests and ECG, which then is repeated every so, so often, depending on the medication, just to make sure that we're prescribing safely is very important. I think the third point why it is important to get this diagnosis is also that us, uh, if someone is diagnosed formally with an ADHD, they are the uh, they should receive certain appropriate adjustment mm -hmm. from uh, the university, the place of work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so I think these are the three main points why why it's important to to make this um, diagnosis right. Yeah, absolutely. I think. I think it's like I was just saying before, you know, it's it's such an easily diagnosed condition and people seem to think that they know and it's actually much more complex than you could really ever imagine. So it is defi definitely a mm -hmm. much more complex uh, to get this diagnosis, probably mm -hmm. the same with autistic spectrum disorder. So mm -hmm. there are two neurodevelopmental uh, disorders. Those assessments are quite lengthy, but obviously, uh, as I mentioned, it's so important to get it right. Yeah. Misdiagnosis uh, of uh, ADHD could potentially put someone at a high risk of long-term health conditions. Yeah. So um, I guess from the, from the ethical perspective, it is absolutely crucial that, it, that we get it right. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for highlighting this. It's really, really interesting and important, obviously. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you no so problem. much. So um, to find out more about doc Dr. Danilovich and his expert psychiatric services, visit his profile to arrange an appointment with him at topdoctors.co.uk. Thank you. Thank you so much.